was Super Break a mistake, ladies and gentlemen? Because Super Break was a mistake based on this interesting video by Fleur. Very, very nice. So, was Super Break in fact a mistake? Let's take a look. Subscribe! Age version of non break units have such high multipliers in their kit compared to old ones. I mean, the obvious point to look at is power creep, you know, as the game progresses, if newer characters aren't stronger than the old ones, why would you roll for them? But in uh, power creep does not exist, guys. Just pull E6, you're completely fine, it's all good. In my opinion, the actual reason is that they need to compete with Super Break. There's a few issues I have with this mechanic, so let me just start with this. Super Break is essentially free damage. All you have to do is build break effect, level your character up, break the enemy, and then- You know what's the best part you do? You don't even need to build break effect. Because Harmony, MZ, and Rame gives you so much f***ing break effect. You can literally go in with like a plus 100 break effect. So even if you have like nothing, it still works. It's just that easy. And you're good to go. There's no real worry about chasing specific pieces or leveling your talents or pretty much anything. Okay, let's be real. You still gotta level your goddamn talents, okay? If I see a level 8 talent on your fucking Rame and Harmony, I'll come to your house and bomb it. You just do one thing, you hope your character has good toughness break efficiency, or use her on Mei because she buffs it, and that's it. It's easy. For the most part, you can ignore the break stat entirely because the supports that are used in Super Break teams give so much of it through yep. their talents and relic sets. Exactly. There's no real build craft, and exactly. any unit can do it. There's exactly. Himiko Super Break, where you don't have to change your relics at all from whatever set you threw on her for pure fiction. There's Super Break Blade, getting better clears at easy... Right here, yeah, it's Super Blade. Hey, and there it is, chat. We have made it to mainstream media. We have made Blade a not Blade, sorry. We have made Super Blade a mainstream media build. I was not fucking around when I was building Super Blade. I like, I was definitely fucking around. I did not expect Super Blade to work that well. Some might say it was a Ling Sha showcase, but you know what? It was goddamn Super Blade, all right? And anyone, anyone can be Super Blade. Super Dale, uh, Super Hook, uh, Super Q. If you believe in it, you can be a Super Break. There's a star man. Zero than he does with a real crit build. Hell, I've even seen Fei Zhao Super Break get clears, though I think those ones weren't as good as their normal playstyle. And nah, 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 nah. Don't disrespect my wife right there. You give her a proper build. My wife deserves the absolute best. Don't insult her with the fucking... In my nah. opinion, it's honestly very similar to Dendro from Genshin. It's easy to act... Bloom! I, I, I love Bloom, by the way. I love the Bloom team in Dendro. It, it, it is... As a Genshin newbie myself that doesn't know fuck all... I know fuck all about Genshin theory counting. All I have to do is press... Uh, press Nilo. Press uh, Harmony Troll Blazer. Uh, press Baichu. And I, I press... Uh, what was the last unit? Yelan. And then I just win. And I still haven't got Kasante yet. And when we get Kasante... Oh my god, it's gonna be so great. Excess damage that doesn't require much of anything to actually work. In that game, the counterbalancing to Dendro started with Nouvellet, who's a crit DPS that they gave crazy strong multipliers, followed by Arlecchino and arguably Navia. Who the fuck is Navia? Nobody uses him. Once Hoyo realized, hey, wait a minute, making a super broken non-Dendro DPS just made the game even easier than it was, the result is that now that we're in 5.x with Natlin's release, they've increased the HP of Monsters in the Abyss by 50%. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. I'm dead. Nuclear HB sponge. Okay. With all due respect, as a rank one Hoyo show, with all due respect, right? With all due respect. HB sponge is not a very interactive mechanic that I would like to see as a player, right? I would prefer we have better bosses better attack designs or even like higher aggros i'm not talking about turn-based games but like an action game right uh hp is a very it's a very cheap way of raising difficulty in a in a in a action game so uh with all due respect right compared to where it was in 4.8 i'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist here but what i'm seeing here is a pattern just like how Nouvellet released with crazy multipliers to counterbalance Dendro, you can see the start of this happening in Starro with a unit like Feijo having a, uh, 
let me check here. Oh, right. 64% stronger ult based on multiplier alone than Scylla does. Okay, to be completely fair, uh, Scylla gets her out like once every like two or maybe three turns. Whereas Faye Xiao gets her out every single turn. So actually it's way more than 64%. Something I think worth mentioning here is that even though Super Break is already really strong, I don't actually think it's even reached its peak yet, which is kind of concerning. The reason I think that is because a lot of different mechanics that are introduced into Star Rail are generally testing grounds for a future character or a game mode change. The most recent example of this is the pure fiction changes that are coming in 2.7, where the grit mechanic from the recent 2.5 War Dance event is being added to it. Another example is the exo toughness bars on the current MOC, and... I wonder who's gonna benefit from exo- Oh wait, it's gonna be Super Break again. It's gonna be the Break team again. So if exo toughness is gonna be a thing, um... You know, I, I, I wouldn't even know why you would even pull for a crit DPS at this point. You just pull break DPS all the way, essentially. You pull rep on side one, firefly side two, slap on harmony trouble is around me, team one, then slap on like a whatever the new support is going to be, and then yeah, it's going to be great. Well, if you know, you know. When those things do get added, it's only lowering the floor to that free damage even more than it already has been. As a result of this, I have a feeling HSR is going to go down the same path that Genshin has. And the problem I have with that is that nothing is ever actually free. We might not see it a ton right now, for example, the higher multiple- This reminds me of like inflation. You know, you think that, you know, if, if the government gives out like handouts during the COVID or everybody gets like a payout, you get a payout, you get a payout, you get a payout. It's very, very good. Uh, except that uh, one year later, the inflation in absolutely every single part of the world is just absolutely fucking diabolical. Uh, it's a very, very similar concept. Suppliers I mentioned is just one example that could be coincidental, but eventually Hoyo is going to get tired of forcing break as much as they have been, and it's the players that are going to feel the consequences of that. It might be something more simple like an HP pool increase like we got with Hule in 2.5, but just because it's... I feel like we were pretty close though. Nah, our Qingchue almost zero cycle Hule, not gonna lie. She almost zero cycle Hule. She was, she was legitimately quite close. It's just a little bit unfortunate that her teammates died on her. Otherwise, we could have gotten to zero cycle fucking Qingchue, you know, frankly speaking. Simple doesn't mean it's a good solution, and I'll touch on that later. Before I do, another thing that I want to talk about is what I briefly mentioned earlier, build crap. One of the things that I like about all the different stats in games like this is that the characters can scale off different things. I want to be clear with something here. I have zero problem with a character scaling off of a specific stat like break effect or HP or effect hit rate or whatever. I think that stuff is actually a good thing because it gives variety and it makes relic farming less- How are all of those three units, the only unit that was like really, really good nowadays is just Gallagher? It's of a pain because eventually there's going to be someone that can use a double crit piece that rolls 20% HP or something like that. The problem with Super Break is that it completely invalidates the break effect stat as something to scale off of for damage. Your double crit piece that rolled once into break isn't looked at as a, hey, Zoe really wants that anymore. It's instead looked at like, well, that sucks. It doesn't have as much break as my other piece, so I guess I'll never. Okay, to be fair, I will still use the first piece just because safe speed is pretty good, right? Sometimes for, for break teams, uh, the speed thresholds are actually a lot more strict than you would imagine. Because if you miss that specific action value, uh, and the enemy moves, you get hit on the counter, it, it gets very annoying. So to get in enough speed for a break team is honestly pretty good. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, I, I could find a use for, for this uh, first piece. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Use it. And sure, it's not to say that Zui or Boot Hill couldn't still use that double crit piece, but it's just not- If anything, break effect has less priority than speed, because the only speed buff we have is Run Mei or DDD. But we have like a billion break effect buffs. So frankly speaking, if you ask me, uh, speed is like more important as a subset than break effect. As long as you hit those necessary treasures, it's really not that bad. The same as it was before Super Break where that stat had value as a damage modifier rather than a damage boost to a specific mechanic. I think it's actually really telling that when you look at the usage rates for Boot Hill and MOC- Oh my god, is that C and usage rate? Inside. His Super Break teams are used more often than hyper carry teams with something like Branya. To go off on a bit of a side note here, I also think it's worth talking about uh, teams with wait. something like Branya. Okay, this, I'm... 
I am 99.99% sure this column that he's showing over here is talking about usage rate instead of appearance rate. So usage rate is if you own the unit, will you use the unit? It doesn't... I, I He should have taken into account the second column, which is appearance rate. That is to say, in the memory of Chaos, which percentage of the teams actually used those in, in the MOC 12 clear? All right, so this is just accounting for usage. Uh, but that being said, wh where is the... Where is the super rate variation in this? His super 2.3% Chat This is 2.3% 20% So 2.3 with a Gallagher 0 0.3 with a Lingsha Break teams are used more often than hypercarry teams with something like Branya This is 0 0.6 So honestly Technically More people were using I guess Gallagher, Bronya, then Harmony, MC, Lingsha. But that just could be because the, uh, people didn't pull for Lingsha. Hey, you know what? You're completely valid. To go off on a bit of a side note here, I also think it's worth talking about early game. I don't know about you guys, but when I first started, it was a struggle. It felt like a challenge because the damage things were doing to us back then felt like a hell of a lot more than we could do back to them. We didn't have high attack and good crit ratios with speed tuning and all the great supports we have now. We just had our basic units like Preservation March and Dan Hang doing 50 damage per skill. I never used Wind Down here my entire life. Fuck him. One of the options we had back then was regular break, and in my opinion, it was good for the same reasons that super break is good now. It was accessible damage and another option that wasn't trying to scrounge together a crit set when all we had was three and four star gear. Most people just went with crit anyway because a lot of people back then rolled for Sila and had access to the Herda store cone that gave a big head start to it, but break was always there as a lesser but still valuable option. It was really, really bad though, back then. But not because of like the whole thing, it's just like, we didn't have the coverage for it. I think the only break unit back then was like Shu Shang. Is there anyone else that uses break? No, right? I'm pretty sure the only break unit better was Shushang. So that like, if they had no physical weakness, Luka was not out yet. I'm talking about literally on launch. Break Asta. Luka came out, Chad, you guys are way too young to be here. Luka is like later, like way later. I'm talking about legit on launch of the base. All right, you guys are like babies. You're, you're basically babies, right? Sit the fuck back down. Uh, so, okay, Asta. I, I think Asta, that's fair. Break, break Asta could be fair. So yeah, break, break and Shushang. So if you didn't have fire or physical weakness, you are kind of fucked. As we all progress through the- And I believe the first couple of- Cause there's no such thing as pure friction back then. There's also no such thing as apocalyptic shadows. And you only have memory of chaos. And memory of chaos buffs. They only buffed your- I believe the very first one was if you are a hunt or erudition unit, you get a free turn every single time with the start of a wave, right? So there wasn't any buffs for break specifically. And they were favoring towards quantum lightning. And I believe ice, if I'm not wrong. That's why Yan Qing was using the very first clear. I'm thinking of this at the top of my head. I could be wrong, but- the elements were just not favoring break better. The game and started getting better builds for our units, break effect became less important because your raw stats could carry your damage instead of the mechanic. Personally, I think that was really healthy for the game as it offered early game variety while players were still figuring things out, and then when Zui Yi was added later and scaled off break effect, it brought the stat back into relevance with a unique build style for a character. Nowadays though, it was written for like 10 people, maybe 5. Nobody plays Shui Yi. All right, let's just be real. No one got them play Shui Yi. So, uh, oh, they uh, literally give you the Harmony Trailblazer when you beat Kakolia, and you're immediately then given access to Super Break. The terrible crit build. Okay, wait, Chad, before we even go there, okay, I, I, I'm going to be 100% agree. Harmony MC as a free unit is. It's bust. Uh, it is completely busted. This but a bitch being a free unit, especially for the free E6, it is completely busted. I cannot believe this is a free unit that you can literally just get like just like that. It's very, very good. It enables the entire super break archetype. And if in the future, let's just say we have a Harmony MC power creep, you can literally just slap her to team two. This bitch being free is crazy. And I wonder what will happen if we were to say get another puff because look at fire mc ain't nobody using a dumbass all right so if we were to get like i don't know like a quantum hunt a a wind abundance uh, 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 uh ice erudition like you know all, like it, they really have to step up a lot 
to match with the amount of utility that we are getting from how many trophies. Otherwise, we can't even. We, we, there's just no point in using them, you know. So, yep. When you beat Kakolia, and you're immediately then given access to Super Break. The terrible crit builds that you have early game just don't matter anymore because now you can just build for break and get strong damage that way. Or like I mentioned earlier, you can just build the units like normal and enjoy the free damage that Super Break offers on top of it. Most people don't have great supports earlier on in their playthrough, so having someone that gives access to a super strong mechanic like that completely changes the landscape of the early game. Personally, I don't consider that to be a good thing because it completely disincentivizes new players from learning actual game mechanics other than just break the enemy and I win. And it's way too easy to use for the damage that it offers. Okay, this point is a very interesting point. So, if players were to build super break teams, it disincentivizes players to learn the game mechanics that you will otherwise learn if you didn't break super break teams. Um, I might agree with this if this was like Genshin Impact, Watering Waves, fucking Monster Hunter. You know Monster Hunter, there's the Defender set series, which makes you completely pop storm the entire base world, and then you just speed run to Ice, Iceborne, right? I think that is fair. But for Honkai Star Rail, I feel like this point is a little bit... Uh, um, debatable because it's not like there's a lot of things you can learn anyways if you look at your crit dps you you are kind of using like similar concepts of battle right you want to save up skill points you have a, you want to have a good skill point economy from your sustain uh and your supports and your dps which is something that you also can learn via super break right it's not like if you're super break you you you, you just like ignore the skill point economy. So for example, if you run out of skill points when you just Firefly's turn, if you run out of skill points when you just Boot Hill's turn, if you run out of skill points when you just Rare Pass turn, it's not going to be too good, right? So you still got to have to learn this. Uh, for sustain, it's kind of like the universal truth in this game. You can't dodge in Hongai Star Hill, so you have to sustain either way. With or without Super Break, you need a sustain. It's not like Gallagher is like a full strength that, that basically keeps the team alive for like no matter what, right? So uh, there's still it's, you still have to build your characters to sustain. It, it, the, I guess the only difference is whether or not you have to sit through the RNG of Leo, your hits getting crit. I think that is probably the biggest difference. Uh, because if your kids don't crit, you either reset or you get better gears. Whereas you will never really face this problem with Super Break. Both Super Break and normal DPS archetypes, if you're against off element, it wouldn't be too comfortable. That being said, if you run face out, it might not be that bad. Or any of the newer units, it might not be that bad. But generally speaking, you also want to kind of use on element units, right? Like you want to use Himeko with Fire Weakness. You want to use your... Let's just say you were using Scylla by then when she first launched. You still want to use Scylla with Quantum Weakness. I, I don't believe Scylla can straight up just uh, brute force her way. Correct me if I'm wrong. At 1.0 on launch, right? So... I think the fundamentals are still okay. It's just that for super break players, it is a lot easier for them to defeat uh, more difficult stages just because of the way super break works. Not only do you do a shit ton of damage, you also, you know, imprison them on the kind of stuff, which kind of brings me to the question. How would a super break brand new player's experience be like right now because you don't have run main? You know, I mean, we we did a video the other time where we used Pella as a substitute for Rame, but I can't imagine that being very comfortable, especially if you are you know just starting out in the game, right? And how many MCs are gonna be available all the way until the later portions of Panacony? Uh, in the future, if Exo Thompson becomes a thing and all that, uh, there's a topic for another day, right? But uh, yep. Considering how easy the game is otherwise, I don't think something making it even easier is something to really be that happy about. All this said, there are some mechanics in the game that they can lean into to counteract Super Break. They could add in more enemies like Sam and the Panacone Soto Monkey who don't always have a breakable toughness bar. Or they could go down the route of giving enemies shields like Argenti's Totems or the Streetlight Robot from Bellabog. Both of those things stop you from- Akron's strongest counter by the way. Akron can ultimate for a billion damage and they'll just stand there unfazed from breaking the enemy and therefore dealing super break damage. But here's the thing, if that's the counter to super break, you also have to consider how that affects non-break teams, right? Like imagine you're playing Fei Zhao and you stack up her ult and then the enemy decides to put up a barrier just before you want to use it. 
You don't have to burn an entire ult on basically nothing, or save the ult and then overstack her ult counter. Another example <laughs> is the imprisonment. Okay, wait, wouldn't this be the same for Super Break, though? Like, it's applied to everyone, right? Unless you have a dispel, it is applied to literally everyone. It's not like uh, crit DPS is not unplayable because of this, this mechanic. Uh, like everyone will face this. Mechanic. What if there's a hyper carry unit that gets released that deals more damage to imprisoned enemies, but you can't imprison the enemy you're fighting because they don't let you break their bar, like when you're fighting something like Sam? Oh, it is a very, 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 very niche example. I have no idea. The toughness bar and shield mechanics seem like simple solutions, but this ties into what I mentioned earlier in terms of consequences that the players will feel. These simple counters to super break will also be super unfun mechanics to deal with for non-break teams, and also essentially deny the viability of other unit archetypes. That said, I do think there are options that they have that aren't so obtrusive to the other damage types, and here's a few of my ideas. One thing that I think they could do is change the buffs that are given by endgame content so that they're more potent towards specific archetypes, as well as they could either adjust or introduce new enemies to counteract break specifically. Personally, I like the second option a little bit less, so let's talk about that one first. An easy way that I think super break's potency could be lowered is if new enemies are introduced that have detriments if you do break related damage to them. For example, they could introduce an enemy that applies debuffs or counterattacks you when you deal break damage, kind of like the Guardian Shadow from Bellabog. Or they could give certain enemies a percent chance to resist breaking whenever you attack them. Those oh just my god, resist breaking! You now have to run EHR mainstead on your units. Resistance to break, that's crazy. There's a couple things that I thought of, but nah, I'm good. But I'm sure there's a lot of options Hoyo has if they wanted to make enemies to do that. I just hope that the ones that they might choose don't end up being super annoying to non break teams. Like I mentioned, I actually like the idea. Okay, I feel like all of these are resistance to break. What does it mean? Does it mean that if you break the target, the target just say nope? Nuh uh, and then the weakness bar just goes back up to full. Because if that's how it works, it's actually so good for break teams. Because then you're going to break them again. And again, and again, and again, and again. You just, you just infinite break them. It, I'm not sure if that's, uh, that's what it means if you resist break. Right? Because that, that's what I'm thinking. You resist the break. So, like, nuh uh, and just go back to being normal <laughs> and just keep breaking them. <laughs> No break bar? No. No, that's not what he's saying. He said there's a chance for the enemy to resist break. That's what he said. Which means that at the point of break, there's now a chance for them to resist it. So if they were to resist, I I'm, I'm assuming he, he probably includes the fact that if you resist the break, you also resist the damage. Maybe you resist the damage. So the whole chunk of their break damage is just gone. It's like completely gone. Okay, I guess if that is the case, then, then it, it can work. Like, just completely nothing. So, like, you go from toughness bar from 100 to 0, and it just does absolutely nothing. Okay, then that, 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 that could be a cook. That could be Because I guess this way, your crit DPS don't really care about it that much. Because your crit DPS can still do, dom uh, do damage with or without break, right? Um, will they stay in the witness broken state, though? If they don't stay in the witness broken state, and you have to break them again... Then why if they just keep resisting? <laughs> Damn break teams just <laughs> never ever clear. <laughs> Cause it just keeps resisting. <laughs> Maybe they add like, like a soft PD. Maybe they add like a soft PD. Or if they resist it, right? They they resist, you take zero damage, but they actually stay in the broken state. If that happens, then you can now proceed to do your normal super break damage. Which, frankly speaking, won't change the root cause of the problem. So uh, we are cooking, we are cooking. The idea of catering endgame buffs towards specific damage niches a bit more. 90% damage reduction after getting broken? So you know who that would be really good for? Brute Force crit DPSs. Bring back E2 Dale. Bring back Jing Liu. Bring back Silla. Fuck all these ignore witness typing but the bitches like Aircrow and Fei Xiao. Or uh, you bring back the good old-fashioned old-school crit DPS. They will never break the toughness. And the moment the toughness is broken, uh, they are immune to damage. Excellent. So let's now talk about that. 
If they decided to go this route and change the buffs offered in endgame modes, I think the way to do it is by making each buff heavily incentivize one playstyle without doing anything to discourage the other types. Here's a hypothetical example. Uh -huh. Let's say you have a unit that wants a lot of crit rate like- unleash my true potential! If they introduce mechanics that look break bar the same set enemies should also disable summons full out crit and immune to every DOT. Yeah, absolutely. Then we can go back to playing our uh, warring wave set. Fei Zhao. They also happen to use a lot of skill points, so they enjoy Sparkle for that. And if you have Sparkle's Light Cone, then you can get some crit rate from that too. When you're choosing your sustain, you decide to go for Fu Zhuan for the crit rate that she provides. That hypothetical unit is going to end up with a ton of crit rate, and depending on your relic situation, might even end up over capping on crit. What the fuck is he building? 156% crit rate. Blood's converting crit rate to win his next 50 50. Holy crit rate. So, what if the endgame buff for one rotation of MOC is that any crit rate you have past 100 gives you a chance to crit a second time, dealing extra damage? That could be quite interesting. Yes. An excess crit rate. And any excess crit rate gets converted to an additional income source. This could unironically make Jing Liu good again. Because you know Wang Jiu's problem is just she has all this crit rate and, and she just has nowhere to go. So any form of excess crit rate being converted could be quite nice. But then again, it's also not a very common scenario, right? It's really not that common of a scenario. You have players nowadays like, oh my god, I'm struggling to hit 70% crit rate, 80% crit rate. You know, it is very, very difficult for them. Uh and if the problem of this is to, you know, diversify the new player experience then new players will never face this problem because they're still trying to get their 7% crit rate so all these things wouldn't even impact them whatsoever now your extra crit rate isn't wasted and you're heavily incentivized to use a crit dps for that rotation of moc rather than something like super break that said just because you're incentivized to use a crit dps for that rotation of moc doesn't mean you're disincentivized from using something else you can still use super break or follow up or dot if you want it's just that one MOC is favored to something else apart from it. See, I honestly don't know if- Oh, yeah, wait. I don't really enjoy tying out the archetype to a MOC bar rotation because it's temporary, right? It's, it's legitimately just for that one MOC and it's gone. I, I hate it. It's just, a, it's just, it's essentially a way to upsell the rate up unit. So, unless Mihoyo is drunk, they will never ever exclusively make an MOC buff to cater to the old archetypes. There, it will always be a, a buff that will try to sell the new units. Right? So, I'm guessing when Sunday comes out, when Fugue comes out, it's something related to Sunday or Fugue. Or when whatever 3.0 unit comes out, it's going to be catered to whatever 3.0. That, that's basically how every single time Mihoyo banners work. Right? It will pretty much never ever happen. I would prefer if they introduced more varieties of enemies. I think enemy design is more important than environment of the of the buffs. Because enemies are kind of what makes or break the the end game. If you if you take away the buffs, right? For example, Aventurine as a boss design, uh I fucking hate it. <laughs> He's, he's a, he's a, I, I really hate Aventurine's board design because it basically means if you can't kill him fast enough, you have to do this, this dices, uh, and he just stalls and stalls and stalls. He stalls more than Tectone, right? Absolutely fucking diabolical. I hate his boss. Hule is an excellent boss design. Incredible speed. Hits you very, very frequently. Uh, and it, it basically tells you as a player, okay, debuffs and DOT are probably not going to be that good on Hule because, you know, he's going to be very fast. The DLs are going to wear off, so you might want to use buffers. Uh, shooter sustains, such as Aventurine, where or any unit that can get hit, or if they take action for some chill, you get more benefits, right? So this kind of enemy designs, where it's, like, it's more interactive to the player, is very, very good. And I hope to see more boss designs in the future. I think some of the bosses that they introduced for, like, Apoch Shadows, which is the Echoes of War boss, Fantilia. Oh my god, she's fucking mad. Oh. Uh, Fantilia, you know, uh, Argenti boss fights. Uh, uh, who, who else? Yan Qing, but okay, maybe not Yan Qing, but like all, all better boss designs, in my opinion, it will make the meta look better. Uh, I feel like Sam specifically, right? I think Sam as well as Argenti is kind of like a means to deviate players away from Super Break, right? Because they do have the uh, weakness lock, toughness lock thingy. 
So if something can come up again in the future in terms of a new boss, new NPC, uh, it could be a pretty good direction. Not to disincentivize players from using Super Break. I think that Hongi Starbucks doesn't need to disincentivize players. I don't think they should. you should hit them with a debuff. You, you shouldn't nerf a archetype based on the enemy design. You should buff the weaker designs. And I think that's what makes a video game fun. If everybody is broken, then nobody is broken. So because Super Break is now quite literally like quote-unquote broken, if they somehow make a boys that can make other team comps, other varieties look good at where they are, it, it, I feel like as a player, it will be more enjoyable to play. I would prefer to just watch my DOT finally do like a billion damage again instead of them reducing Super Break to nothingness. Oh my god, now Super Break gets nerfed because this enemy has like 80% resistance to break damage, right? So uh, that's me personally. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below on whatever it is, absolutely. I have a problem with Super Break as a concept, and I certainly don't think directly nerfing the damage niche is a good idea. It's in the game at this point, and it's going to be something that we have to deal with from now on regardless of how Hoyo decides to balance. I just think that I have a problem with it due to its ease of access and the ability to use it in pretty much any game mode without any downsides whatsoever. In the current landscape of the game, I don't even think there's anything that's bad for it which makes it feel that much more oppressive as a damage type. Tree team content, done. Tree team content? Or a tower content like Zenler Zone Zero, where after you finish using that one team, you can't use that team anymore. Okay, chat. Am I being unreasonable to ask for three team content? Is this out of touch? You guys still only have eight units to your name for after one and a half years? No, right? Okay, that's great. Uh, I really, really wish they make three team content. It will bring so, so, so much life to the game, and it, it is like, and it's the easiest way to go about it. All they have to do is literally just slap on another boss. Slap on that four bubbles to slot in four units, it's done. You don't even have to change anything. And it will bring so much variety because now players actually have to diversify and expand beyond their options. At this point of the game right now, because Super Break is such a dominant archetype, you can literally just zero cycle one cycle the first half, and the second half, you just do whatever the fuck you want to use, and you just clear in like eight cycles, nine cycles, and you still get the full three star reward. Three team content, it will really encourage players to start to, you know, Look into the options beyond Super Break and actually optimize Team 2 and Team 3. And in, a, in this case, bring out the variety and match the perform uh, the perf ha! match their performance compared to Super Break. Right? Absolutely. Hopefully in the future, Hoya Shit, takes a look at all this and realizes that there needs to be a leveling of the playing field. I just really hope that it's not at the cost of something like an HP increase that Genshin got or annoying mechanics like giving a bunch of enemies shields and whatnot that affects damage niches outside of Super Break. What do you think? Do you view Super Break as a problem? And if so, what would you do to bring it more in line with other damage niches? Even if you're okay with where Super Break is at at the moment, feel free to let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Absolutely. Anyway. Very, very interesting. Okay, before we wrap up this video, what do we think about Super Break? In my opinion, I think Super Break is good. I like Super Break. It allows players, especially new players, to just get in ASAP. So if you would ask me as a new player, if I, if I were to play Genshin, right? And I, if I didn't have access to Bloom, I would still be rolling around in a... I don't know. I would be rolling around with like... Ke Ching, uh, fucking Rosaria, uh, Bennett, uh, 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 Sh Sh Xiang Ling, uh, and then just, just dying and then just never attempting Spiral Abyss. But because we got access to a blue team, especially for me as a new player, it allowed me to get into the endgame content a lot faster. I get to cut a lot of the yap. And I think in order to introduce, if we want to introduce new players to, to Hongi Starbucks, a ease of access, lowering the barrier to entry for new players to get to endgame, I think it's an excellent, excellent choice. There's no point making them go through like one year just to get a good crit team to tackle endgame content. It's pointless. Why would you want to make the new player experience take so long just to do the endgame, right? I, I like Super Break, especially for new players. It's good. But going forward, it would be nice if they can, you know, start to bring up the others as well or introduce more archetypes and it brings out the variety of things. So this way, it 
incentivizes the new players to look something beyond just Rick and incentivizes the old players to look something like, okay, you know what? I've been invested in Crit DPS since 1.0. I invested in Qingyuan since 1.0. I invested in Kafka Black Swans uh, since 1.7 or whatever the fuck. So it, it, it's also good for the community when they start to realize that there are more than one ways uh, to, to, to beat an egg. Right? There are one, more than one ways to, to cook a fish. So it, it will also bring about life. And personally, I think Super Break is fine. It's just that there needs to be more content that encourages more archetypes. You either true, I think these two means I mentioned just now, more boss designs, because I believe Memory of Chaos buff or any of the endgame buff is never going to be catered towards the old teams because they always want to sell new units. Or introduce three team content in MOC, in Pure Vision, in Apoc Shadows, whatever it is. I think making more floors like MOC 14 or Pure Vision 10 or Apoc 10, it is not that good, per perhaps, for myself, because it essentially just translates to a HP sponge, right? The enemies are going to be stronger. It's not like they're going to introduce more enemies at, like, APOC 10, right? It's, it's basically a HP sponge. So, a, a content that can actually introduce three teams, it will be the quickest and easiest way to go about it without directly inflating the entire health pool to the point where it just becomes, like, a DPS check for, like, every single content. Uh, I would really hate to be there for the day where Hongai Star Rail gets so much HP bloat that I don't even want to use a sustain. We just go sustain Bubbin. We go sustain Runme. We go sustain E6 Aircraft, right? So that, that was really, really Uh, I am going to be at war Uh, two days later. So by the time this video goes up, I'm probably already gone. Uh, World of Day is going to be three teams. Make it happen. Join Twitch, join YouTube, join Discord, join Twitter, and join the... All the best for your job, boys. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.